The 1980s and 1990s of Major League Baseball are tainted. Steroids, greenies, amphetamines, and human growth hormone by then had all made their ways into the sport and helped give certain players a competitive advantage over others. Now, after MLB has made all of those substances illegal, players like Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Sammy Sosa, and Rafael Palmero, among others, are denied entry into the Hall of Fame because of either their supposed or proven history with those drugs. But is that principle right? Is it fair to deny those players the Hall of Fame even if their numbers say they deserve it? No one will deny that the previously mentioned players deserve to make the Hall purely based on their career stats. A refusal to vote for them is built on a different foundation. Some argue that those who cheat don't deserve to be in the Hall. Others argue that we don't really know what players' career numbers would be if they never actually took steroids. However, denying steroid users' entry to the Hall of Fame is more complicated than just fencing out the people who the general public might consider to be cheaters. The first question a voter has to ask is, which players do you not let in? While conventional wisdom says guys like Mark McGuire and Sosa were roiding, what should a voter do about those guys who may or may not have been on performance-enhancing drugs? Ivan Rodriguez's career arc makes it seem like he was on steroids, but he never actually has been implicated. Rodriguez's offensive numbers, along with his defensive prowess, make him a shoe-in for the Hall of Fame. But can a voter who is opposed to steroids let him in? Now let's take a delve into the MLB rulebook. Pre-2003, it was fine to take steroids. Maybe it wasn't too healthy for your heart, but if a player didn't want to have a shriveled ego, he'd go to the substance that would shrivel something else. Then the home runs came. The fans loved it. Out of nowhere, these massive, Hulk-like no-names started bashing 50 round-trippers a year, making a Brady Anderson bomb seem like something that's just a normal, everyday occurrence. But MLB turned its head, which was getting larger and larger with each injection. Ban these guys from the Hall of Fame, but before 2003, not only were steroids not illegal in baseball, they seemed to be encouraged. Former Boston utility infielder Lou Merloni has actually said that at some point in his Red Sox tenure, from 1998 to 2003, the front office hired a doctor to teach players the most efficient and least dangerous ways to shoot up. Baseball can't have such a shallow view of punishing the players. It goes deeper than that. This was some sort of inexplicable culture that we as everyday people can't truly understand. Guys didn't necessarily look like this. Or this. Or this. But they did look like this. On top of that, we don't truly know the effect of steroids on baseball from a medical perspective. We know how they affect the heart. We know how they affect fertility. If you just base these tests on Sammy Sosa's life, you can argue they just turn you into a Caucasian. But we don't really know how much the ballplayers were helped. If a Hall of Fame voter will deny entry to players he presumed took performance-enhancing drugs, then what does he do about players like Pudge, who are on the fence? What does a voter do about a player like Bernie Williams, who was a very good player, but who didn't dominate because he was never on roids? Maybe if he played in another era, without performance-enhancing drugs, then Williams would have been able to take over and be one of the faces of his generation. Not voting for steroid players, but also not voting for players like Bernie Williams, will lead to too small a number of Hall of Famers from the steroid era. The right thing to do is just vote for the players who took PEDs. That way, no speculation is involved. The players who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame will be there, and ultimately, getting the players that deserve it to Cooperstown is the most important thing.